Hi, this is Nico Illiford, Hermanos Berlakis, presenting case 292 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a complicated side based procedure. The patient was referred for PCI of a right coronary artery CTO. He had a well defined blunt proximal cap, a small acute marginal originating above the area of the CTO. And uh, on dual injection, there was again the well defined proximal cap, diffusely diseased distal vessels, and there seemed to be some septal as well as some epicardiac collaterals going to the distal right. So, to summarize, what we have is uh, a well defined but blunt proximal cap, length of about 20 to 30 millimeters, a diffusely diseased uh, distal vessel, and we do have septal and epicardiac collaterals. The plan was to try undergrade wiring first, followed by retrograde through septals, followed by ADR if the other techniques failed. The patient's hemodynamics were good at baseline with a systolic of 150 to 160 millimeters mercury. We tried undergrade wiring, but we were unable to advance a wire past the proximal cap. And as a result, we decided to try retrograde. We tried several septals using a SUO03 as well as a CM black eyed wire, but the wire kept on entering the cavity or in another space. After multiple attempts, we decided to try the side base procedure. As a reminder, the side base procedure is one way to wire along the vessel architecture while avoiding the wire going into a side branch. The way we do this is we take a small balloon. This was a tuo balloon that is inflated halfway in the main vessel and halfway into the side branch. After the balloon is inflated, then a guide wire is knuckled. The balloon prevents the guide wire from going into the side branch, and then the wire can follow the course of the vessel. In this case, a gladius mongo avoids the acute marginal and seems to advance along the course of the right coronary artery. Contralateral injection did confirm that we're extra plaque along the vessel architecture. So our next step was to try re-entry. We brought uh, the Stingray balloon and uh, tried with a stick and swap technique with uh, a Pilot 200 wire. However, during this time, we saw a gradual decline in his blood pressure. This is earlier on after the re-entry. But as time goes by, we're seeing the blood pressure is going down. We also have a significant pulsus paradoxus drop of the systolic blood pressure during inspiration. Pressure keeps on going. Now it's in the 80, and then we have a remarkable pulsus paradoxus. Now the patient is essentially in PARS at some point. So um, um, at this point, we started CPR. and. The question is, why is the patient hypotensive? We did an injection of the donor vessel, but we did not see anything concerning. There was no dissection or injury in the donor vessel. But then we took an image of the CTO vessel, and now we see that we have a perforation at the site of the acute marginal branch. So essentially, we had a perforation happen while we did the side base. We did not realize it, and that is why the patient went into tamponade. So CPR was needed transiently, and then uh, we did uh, pericardiocentesis, and after we drained the pericardial blood effusion, the blood pressure came nicely back up. The patient was intubated, and of course, before doing anything, we did put a balloon to minimize the extravasation, which was fairly substantial. We decided to put a covered stent, although the Perforation was in the side branch, and often we can coil those branches. We thought that this branch was fairly disrupted, so we decided to cover the whole side branch by using a covered stand, a PK papyrus stand, which uh, successfully treated the perforation. And then we also placed uh, a drag eluting stand, both uh, to cover the areas proximal and distal, and also potentially to decrease the risk of restenosis. This was the final result. Not perfect, but we do have Timothy flow into the right coronary artery, and the perforation was sealed. And the patient hemodynamics after the 
drain was placed remained pretty good. Multiple lessons from this case. The first one is about the side base. This remains a very useful technique for avoiding side branches. However, there is a small risk, and the risk here was from the balloon in the side branch. The balloon caused rupture or perforation of the side branch and tamponade. So the way to avoid this is try to minimize the size of the balloon. Of course, one needs to strike a balance between a large enough balloon that prevents the wire from getting there and too small that does not prevent the wire from going there. But also low pressures of inflation can be useful to minimize the risk of injury. The second lesson is about the management of hypotension during percutaneous coronary intervention. The key issue here is to find out why the patient is hypotensive. In the case of CTOPCI, we first check the donor vessel. Sometimes donor vessel injury can cause ST elevation and hypotension, but our patient did not have significant ST elevation. And then check the CTO vessel. That's when we found out the perforation in the acute marginal branch. And lastly, the PK papyrus stand remains the one we use when there is a large vessel uh, perforation, but also can be used for side vessel perforations when it is difficult or undesirable to coil the side uh, branch that has perforated, as was the case in our patient. Thank you so much.